conversation about uh, biofilms. So biofilms are a combination of bacteria and sometimes other microorganisms. Sometimes there's eukaryotes in there, sometimes viruses, depending on the environment that it's in, that are attached to a solid surface and they're all kind of mushed together in one another's EPS, right? There have been some questions about how the term biofilm applies versus EPS or capsule or slime layer. EPS is the chemical, right? Extracellular polymeric substance. That's the chemical that makes up the structures that we think of as capsules and slime layers. <clears throat> the capsule and the slime layer, the EPS, that's not the biofilm. The biofilm is the live microorganisms along with the, the EPS while attached to a surface. So you see in this image here, there are three major steps in biofilm function. You've got the attachment phase where planktonic or unattached bacteria decide they're going to attach to a surface like you see down here. They can attach using their flagellum. It can act like a little hook. They can use little structures called fimbriae that are hair-like structures that are used for attachment. Or they can simply attach using their, their capsule, right, by way of the stickiness of the EPS. <clears throat> Once they attach, they begin growing and dividing and recruiting other microbes, and they form this three-dimensional city, and uh, this would be the growth phase. You can see within this three-dimensional city, there are channels for water. Uh, it's important because the water is going to bring in nutrients. It's going to take away waste products. It's going to bring in uh, oxygen and keep certain regions of it at least oxygenated. Uh, and then how does it disperse? It disperses either by chunks of embedded uh, bacteria uh, releasing and then reattaching or actually individual cells escaping from the biofilm um, and uh, and moving on to wherever the next place is that they're going to go so that's what a biofilm is so let's think now about why biofilms are important <clears throat> here's an image of a biofilm for you you can see here uh, this is Staphylococcus aureus uh, on a patient's indwelling catheter. Uh, you see a theme here. We, we often see indwelling devices uh, attracting biofilms. Um, and so you can see this image here, the individual coxy, sometimes clumped, and then all this goop, which is the EPS, allowing them to stick to the surface of the catheter. This becomes a problem for a lot of reasons. Let's think about why this becomes a problem. So what do biofilms do? Why do we care about them? Well, number one, it turns out that biofilms are often a source of persistence persistent infections. So if a patient has an indwelling catheter with a, a biofilm that's formed on it, they may get a UTI or a, um, a bladder infection, even a kidney infection, and you can treat the infection, but it's going to come back because there's a, a persistent source that's constantly re-inoculating the urinary tract until you get rid of that, um, that catheter and start over, you're going to continue to have that problem. Same is true with other types of infections. So you can see here we've got a, uh, uh, an open wound that has um, biofilm. You can't quite tell from the picture, but it's infected with biofilm. And uh, that, that infection is going to be very difficult to, uh, to clear without actually removing more tissue, possibly even amputating the foot to make sure that uh, that infection does not persist. The second bullet says that there's an inefficacy, in other words, it doesn't work, of antimicrobials and disinfectants or detergents. That thick layer of, um, of EPS really impedes penetration by antibiotics, by bleach, by peroxide, etc. And most of the microbes in the biofilm survive that exposure. Uh, it can impede tissue repair. So you can see here in this picture, somebody lost a toe, some kind of a, a, an accident, maybe farming or, or something like that, never went in. When they finally went in, uh, there was all kinds of complications, including a biofilm infection um, of the, uh, the open wound. And you can see that the wound's not repairing. The biofilm actually impedes tissue repair and it slows down that tissue repair. And then finally, direct and continued tissue damage. And so if this person didn't uh, eventually come in, chances are that that wound would uh, grow larger, the damage would become greater until eventually um, it took the whole foot or possibly uh, worked its way into the bloodstream and, uh, and claimed the life of this patient. So biofilms cause some pretty significant problems when it comes to infections. Where do they form? Uh, urinary catheters is one we've already talked about. Other indwelling devices like heart valves, uh, prosthetic 
um, prosthetic limbs, etc. Uh, knee replacements are a good example, hip replacements, those kinds of things will often attract microorganisms and then there's a surface that they can grow on and form a biofilm. Surficial wounds, um, uh, so skin wounds, scrapes, etc. Uh, periodontal disease, plaque, dental caries, gingivitis, etc. are all biofilm based. Otitis media or middle ear infections can be biofilm based. Uh, sinusitis or sinus infections are often biofilm based, especially if they're recurring, really tough to, to clear infections. Somebody that gets an infection maybe once a year, it may not be biofilm based. But if the sinus cavity actually has biofilm growing and living on it, an antibiotic treatment might only give some temporary relief, but that infection is going to come back pretty quickly because those antibiotics, as we said on the last slide, aren't going to do a real good job of, uh, of clearing that infection. In fact, when that's the case, Surgery is usually the only option. We have to open up the sinus cavity and physically remove the biofilm uh, surgically. <clears throat> Cystic fibrosis patients, um, in fact, frequently mortality associated with CF is due to a biofilm-based uh, pneumonia. Pneumonia is simply a, an inflammation of the lungs. So we've got a lung infection that's bacterial, but it's not just individual cells. It's cells that have formed biofilm all through the lungs. And so CF patients um, often suffer from, uh, from biofilm pneumonias. And then endocarditis as well, heart infections. Uh, whether or not you've got a heart valve issue uh, can be biofilm based. And again, very difficult to clear. So my recommendation to you is to go back through these slides and think them through, take some good notes, pause when you need to, double check against your book, and make sure you understand this material well. Uh, in the meantime, I will go ahead and sign off. If I can figure out how. <laughs>